So the first song is a spiritual, and it, we can sing it together as we gather. I'll teach it to you, it's very simple. And it has a simple gesture. You're just gonna, like you're inviting someone to come with you. How many of you would like to make it to heaven one day, yes? Shoot past purgatory right into heaven, all right. So just the gesture of inviting someone to go with you to heaven, to go with you on the journey toward heaven. Uh, how many of you would like to make it to heaven and be there all by yourself? Anybody? No. We'd like to bring as many family and friends with us. So we're gonna do this gesture of inviting people to go with us. And it sounds like this. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Look at the person next to you and say, you can do that. So, I'll teach you the first phrase. Come and go with me to that land. Sing. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Wonderful. How many of you sing in the primary choir whenever you go to Mass? Every hand in this room should be in the air. Who is the primary choir at Mass? Say we are. Everyone who comes to Mass is in the primary choir. Please raise your right hand and your index finger in the air like this. Don't think about it. Just do it. Point to the person next to you and say you are a choir member. We are all called to be choir. So we're going to sing this beautiful song that you just learned. It's a spiritual, and it sounds like this. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land where I'm bound. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go with me to that land. Come and go
Now, there's a song called Lord, I Love You. And I wrote this song as a praise chorus to go before a, a song that's traditional in the African-American Roman Catholic community called God is So Good. So this is, this is American Sign Language, one of, the, one of the words for love. So let's do this word love. Lord, I love you. I lift my hands before you. So we're thinking about communion. I give you glory. So this is orons for us Roman Catholics. Lord, I give you praise. Now notice I'm not doing it like our Protestant brothers and sisters, keeping it low and just easy, low impact. Lord, I love you. I lift my hands before you. I give you glory. I give you praise. So that's, that's the, the, the uh, gesture, the body gesture. And we as Roman Catholics, we love to put music and prayer in our, in our whole bodies. So look at the person next to you and say, move with me today. Okay, so we're going to move today. And, it, and the song sounds like this, let me teach it to you. Lord, I love you. I lift my hands before you. I give you glory. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I love you. I lift my I give you glory and praise. I give you glory and praise. Look at the person next to you and give them a little high five and tell them good job. Encourage them. <laughs> Wonderful. So Lewis is going to play the intro and let's just stand for a moment and find that peace in our body. Lift my hand. 
song Sacred Silence as we begin to call ourselves to holy silence. Sacred Silence. Holy Ocean. Gentle water washing over me. Help me listen, Holy Spirit. Come and speak to me. Sacred silence.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Good morning, good people of God. Wow, you're even awake this morning. I don't see any, I see a lot of people out there. I see a lot of priests, I see bishops. Are there any teachers out there? <laughs> now, if there are teachers here, there should be students here. Is there any school children here? Are there any high school kids? I, I shouldn't say kids, high school students. Is there any high school? Okay, so this must be a convention of Catholic schools. Good. <laughs> We're in the right place, are we? So today we come to give thanks to the Lord. We come to pray for you as teachers, but we come to thank the Almighty Teacher, Jesus Christ, who truly is our teacher, our leader, our guide. So my brothers and sisters, it is with joy in my heart that I welcome you here to this convention as we come to give thanks to the Lord as we begin in prayer. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty and ever-living God, who will that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water by which we seek protection on this your holy day, O Lord. Renew the living springs of your grace within us and grant that by this water we may be defended from all ills of spirit, mind, body, and soul. And so approach you with hearts made cleanse and worthily receive your salvation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of your kingdom. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. O God, who have bestowed on us paschal remedies, endow your people with heavenly gifts, so that possessed of perfect freedom, they may rejoice in heaven over what gladdens them now on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter said to the Jewish people, let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and they asked Peter and the other apostles, what are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, this Jesus whom you crucified, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Mary Magdalene stayed outside the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she bent over into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet where the body of Jesus had been. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken my Lord, and I don't know where they laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus there, but did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? She thought it was the gardener and said to him, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you laid him, and I will take him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop holding on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them, I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and then reported what he had told her. The Gospel of the Lord. I'm looking out here this morning, and there's a lot of people here, isn't there? Wow. And they're from everywhere. The front row here has got all the NCEA people. Can you imagine that? And who's in all those other seats? Teachers, wow. And we have people from all over the Nifty 50 states, don't we? Almost all every Nifty 50 states, we have people here today. But we also have two of my brother bishops, and they come from Arizona. Can you imagine Arizona? Is it warm in Arizona? Very warm. Very warm. As warm as Florida? Cold? No, oh good. Now, Father, I mean, Bishop Murray, I know you come from Pennsylvania, but is it warm in Pennsylvania? Ohio, Ohio sorry, oh, well, I made a big mistake. I don't know my nifty 50 states, wow. From Ohio. And what is it like in Ohio? Wonderful, every day is wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> So that's why you came to Florida for the week. Good. And we have all these priests here from all over, I guess, the nifty 50 states. Some of them I know because they're from Florida. Some are from Orlando. Can you believe it? But you know, my homily this morning, I'm kind of stuck for words because, you know, I, I'm always nervous talking to teachers. And there's too many teachers in this room today I want to focus on these people over here. Weren't they good? You were, I don't know what kind of a word I can use. You were awesome. I am really proud of all of you, and you all come from the schools where? All over every place. We have Holy Redeemer from Kissimmee. We have, I got to look at Mary Magdalene. We have, I think, Margaret Mary. We have St. Mary's in Rockledge, wow. And I guess I better not forget Bishop Moore. Did I forget you guys? And you did such a good job. That responsorial psalm was really beautiful. 
Now, you see these people over here, these elegant people? Stand up, John Vianney. <laughs> Father Miguel, did you make them dress up? Does Father Miguel make you dress up like this all the time? No? <laughs> well, thank you. You look so elegant this morning. I feel underdressed with you people around. <laughs> so thank you for being here. So, so you can sit down for a little while. You know, the scripture readings this morning, you know, after Easter, everything changes. The church changes. The disciples had to change. And sometimes we have to change. And the question I would ask you this morning is, when you're afraid and you're scared, who do you look for? Do you look for anybody? God? Wow, I'd say that. But somebody more important to in your life right now? Jesus? Wow. We're all Catholic. We got it all down. <laughs> your parents, that's the most important one right now. Now, Jesus and God are important, but your parents are the most... They're there every day, aren't they? So when you're scared, you look for your parents. And what do your parents do to you? They call you by name, don't they? So whatever your name is, they call you. And they reassure you, they help you. So you're not so scared anymore. So in the gospel today, we have somebody very scared. And this is a lady. She's a grown-up. That's why I don't want to ask any of the teachers, because, you know, grown-ups don't want to tell you when they're scared. They're always hiding. Well, you know, the good thing about you, you never hide. So Mary Magdalene is scared. She's scared because why? Because they have taken away Jesus from her. And she's really, really scared. And she goes looking for Jesus. And where does she find, where does she think she's going to find him? In the tomb. She goes out into the tomb. And does she find Jesus there? No. So she's really sad, really, really sad. So she finds two people there, and what does she say to them? Where have you put the body of Jesus? I want to find him. And she's weeping. She's so sad. And then slowly but surely, what happens? Something very important. You got the answer over? You can, yeah, you can tell. I'll give you a minute. Jesus rises from the dead. No, you got it. Jesus calls her. And what does he call her by? He calls her by her name. He calls her by her name. Does your parents call you by your name? So when mom is really angry with you, do you know that? Well, how, how does she call you? By your full name, wow. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that parents, when they call, when they're upset with you, they call you by your full name. When I was a little boy, my mom, when she was angry at me, she used to say, John Jurd, where are you? Is that the way your parents say it? Yes, some of you agree. Good. And I'm sure those two bishops over there and all those priests and all those teachers out there have the same experience, but they don't want to say that. <laughs> They're all shy. But the most important thing then is, what does Jesus say to her? He said something very important to her. It's okay, don't be afraid. It's okay, don't be afraid. Wow. And he says something else to her. Do you know what he says? He uses a, a foreign word to us. He uses the word rebane. And rebane, we hear... <laughs> It's kind of a very unusual word because it's not a word we use every day, but it means teacher. 
but it's not a word that we use for your teachers every day. But it's not like teacher. It's somebody who is more powerful and more special than teacher. It's like when you call your mom and dad. What do you call mom? What do you call your mom? Do you call your mom any special name? Mommy. Mommy. And what do you call your dad? Daddy. Daddy. Poppy. Don't you call dad mommy, poppy? You have all these different unusual names. And Mary Magdalene calls Jesus Rabboni, which means not just a regular teacher, but somebody who is very special. And I don't want to ask you, but you probably have special teachers, your favorite teachers, don't you? But don't tell me now, because <laughs> all these people out here will get very jealous. <laughs> so when we hear Mary Magdalene replied to Jesus, she said, he's not just a regular teacher, he is the most special and most perfect teacher to her in her life. Why? because Jesus helped her to change her heart. And that's the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles that Peter is trying to tell the people, repent. And we use it in another word, metanoia. We don't use that word every day, but repent is not just give up something. We give up stuff for Lent. But metanoia means change your heart. And when you change your heart, what happens? You become a whole you become a better person. And that's what we're here today about. We're talking about the future because all of these people out here are teachers and they want to make the future a better place. And the way we do that is by helping people like you, young people, to change your heart so we can change the world. Do we need to change the world? Is there a lot of sadness in the world? A lot of people suffer in the world, a lot of people sad. Where Father King, uh, Bishop Kincanus is from, this summer there were lots of children in his diocese came across the border. No parents. And Bishop Kincanus took those children in because he wants to make their lives better, because he wanted to reunite them with their parents. So we want to make our world better and you are part of that future world, and all these people out here are part of making that world a better world. And that's why we're here today, to celebrate, to give thanks to Rebone, that great teacher, the greatest teacher that ever lived. Not just a regular teacher, but a teacher that truly loves each and every one of us. That teacher who can change our hearts so we can change the world. So can we do that? Are you all going to try? Wow. So are you going to help them? <laughs> so now are you ready? I'm going to ask you all the questions. Are you ready? <laughs> so you can take out your blank sheet of paper and your pens and pencils and this is a test. And this test is going to last for the rest of your life. But one day you will go before that great teacher and he will ask you, have you taught your students well? Have you changed their hearts and given them that special gift, the heart of the great teacher of all, Jesus Christ, amen. I ask you now to please stand. Brothers and sisters, filled with the paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved son may now hear the prayers we make for all the world.
that the church, the people of God, brought through saving waters, will faithfully proclaim in word and in deed the good news of Christ's victory over sin and death. We pray to the Lord. Persecuted Christians may feel the consoling presence of the risen Lord and the solidarity of all the church. We pray to the Lord. that those who govern peoples and nations will always seek first to uphold the common good of all and, and the inherent dignity of the human person, especially those who are poor and most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. that the human family may learn to respect creation and care for it as a gift of God. We pray to the Lord. Catholic educators and catechists may guide others to see God in all things. We pray to the Lord. those who are sick may experience the healing power of Christ's resurrection. We pray to the Lord. forever in the light of God's face. We remember Orlando host committee member, friend and colleague, Jenny Hennigan. We pray to the Lord.
glorious God, you raised your son Jesus to gain for us eternal life in your kingdom. Help us to live as resurrection people, eager to proclaim the joy of the gospel at all times. We ask this to Jesus Christ, our Lord, yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen.
pray, pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, we pray, the offerings of our, your family, that under your protective care, they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal. This we ask through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but especially above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death. By rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing to together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say in English, Spanish, Creole, French, whatever language you learn, the Our Father. Let us pray as Jesus taught you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, for in our sins of death. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. He does not have temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And we Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Jerry, peace be with you, God bless you. Peace, Tim, God bless you. Peace to Jim, thank you. Seamus, peace be with you, God bless you. Peace be with you.
Este es el Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <coughs> Hear us, almighty God, and as you have bestowed on your family the perfect grace of baptism, so prepare their hearts for the rewards of eternal happiness. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know if there's any announcements. Bishop Murray, no announcements? Did we finish on time? Did we finish on time? Okay. I think um, class begins when for the teachers? School begins when? 10.30, you gotta be in class, teachers, okay? But again, it was a joy to be with you all today, a joy too to have all of you from all different walks of life in the sense of different parts of the United States. Thank you for being here. Thank you above all for the work you do. Really, truly, Catholic education is a gift. A gift not only to the church, but even a gift to our nation. Unless we truly, truly uphold the teachings, the gifts that we have been given by Jesus Christ, we truly will not, tru we will not really leave a mark in our world. And our world needs the mark of Jesus Christ more than ever today. I thank everybody who made this day possible, but especially the musicians, those who have served, and especially... <laughs> now, especially the choir. What did you think of the choir? And of course, Bishop, you'll agree with me, if we didn't have altar servers, we would not, we would be dummy. We would look dummy. So thank you for making us look good today. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and adop adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he who by whose redeeming work you have received the gifts of everlasting freedom make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. I ask the bishops to join me in the blessing. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia.